else. So today I'm going to make a fully solar powered water pump that will pump water to my roof using tools and equipment and some skills that I do not have using my grandfather's shed. Just follow me along this journey of unprofessional solutions. It broke, but step one, I guess, is just marking holes of where I'm going to drill. Use professional tools. Now it's set to drill. Look at that skill. It's one. Go. Another one. So it's very important to make sure your drill is set to drill instead of on you. Go like this. The point of this is the process. You know, sometimes life's about the journey, not the destination. Oh, God, that hurts. Okay, done. Step one complete. Look at this. All right, so now I'm just kind of eyeballing about how long I need the input tube to be. This is my water tank. And I'm just going to make a T connection here, just about here, which is going to go a T, which I don't have right now, T for this, which will be able to input straight into this main line to bring it to there. Okay, so I'm on the roof, and this is going to be the little tank. It's only 70 liters, but that's enough for what I'm trying to do. And there, Marina is helping me with kind of sizing up how long this is. So Marina, I want you to put that next to the outlet of the pump. So here I am again, back down as part of amateur hour again, because I think these tubes that I got, they, uh, they're the wrong size for this. But my solution is a cup of boiling water, and I'm gonna just expand it a bit with a butter knife. And hope it works. Kind of like, like this. Oh my god. And I know it cools down if you do okay again. Anyway, it's gonna get way softer. I'm gonna pull it around. Anyway, regardless, I'm gonna put those locking things after. So then it'll be okay. And this actually kind of works. But I think with the. <laughs> yeah, this is terribly amateur. But yeah. Alright, so kinda worked. I'm gonna put this soon, but regardless of without this, it's pretty on, like I can't remove this easily. So with this it'll be definitely better. And now I'm just gonna do a quick test if it can pump all the way up. On the specs it says it has a a five meter head. So that's four and a half, five meters, so we're just gonna test it. So for the first test. Uh, this is going to be the battery I'm going to run this on anyway. And I have my charge controller. And I'm just connecting these um, ends to it. And this is definitely not the way to do it. First of all, you should color code usually where the positive or negative is. And I don't really have the clips. So I'm using nothing except wrapping it around with the copper coil and then with some electric tape. So now just to see if this battery has a charge and charge controller. Alright, it's turning on. It's working. So I'm going to show the schematics in a moment, but just for now, what's happening is this battery is being fed into this charge controller. Charge controlling is going to this switch that I got, which is a, a 12 volt switch, and you can hear the motor running. So now we're just going to put a water bottle to see the flow rate and if it's going to be successful. Okay, the very first test. This tube is in this water bottle now, and let's see how fast, if it goes. And it's pulling it out. It looks like it's filling it. Oh, it's pretty fast. It's getting way down. Water's going somewhere. took about 35 seconds for one and a half liters. All right, I did some math. It's gonna take 24 minutes to fill the tank up there, 70 liters using this pump. So 24 minutes is perfect because this is more than enough to run this for a couple hours actually. So 24 minutes pump that and then we're good. 
I mean, I'm gonna go up there and actually confirm it's there. All right, turn it on. Okay. Yeah. What's happening? Is the water emptying? No. What's, where's the water? What's happening? Pull it out of the water for a second. Put it back in. Turn off the motor. Okay, I came back down. I think the issue was the pump priming. So it says it's auto priming. However, I realized the auto priming is a little bit weak. But as long as it's completely primed every time, it works and brings it all the way to the top. So if I anyway, I was saying this is not a great test because in reality, when this tube is going to be connected to the tank, it's going to be at the same level. So the water is always going to be here because it's going to be at the level of the water of the tank. So as long as the tank is more than a third full, that won't be a problem and even when it's less it's going to be already primed from before so i don't think the priming is going to be a huge issue here but once i oh that's going to fall on my head watch it wait for it okay so just schematics um which are important for everyone to understand so first of all i have my big tank which is 5,000 liter and this has already been collecting rain from the winter it rains on the roof and goes directly into my tank and so what happens is it's going to go up here feed a 70 liter tank and then this is going to gravity feed a shower system which i haven't installed yet and a faucet here which i have installed and so that's kind of the only purpose of the 70 liter is this low pressure but medium flow rate of things now as for the energy and the solar panel system sometimes i think this is overwhelming for people to understand how it works but i kind of learned this while doing this process over the last few weeks but what's really going to happen is that i'm going to have a solar panel on the roof right next to the tank and this solar panel, what it's a 12 volt, 40 watt solar panel. That's just telling you the power rank, rank, rating of it. So the energy when it's sunny is going to go into something called a charge controller. And what that does is that it takes the energy from the solar panel where it, it, it might move around. Meaning if there's a cloud, you know, it might dip for a moment or at night it might be zero, but it just goes up and down or whatever. And what the charge controller does is it makes it a very even line of energy, like an even amount of um, electricity to go into the battery, which I have a 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery. And 12 amp hours just tells you the capacity of it. So it also, what else the charge controller does is that it makes sure the battery won't overfill, it won't, and it also won't, um, it won't be used too much and what i mean by that is that my battery is a lead battery meaning that normally you shouldn't uh empty it to zero it should actually go only about 50 60 percent so in reality this 12 amp hour amp hours is kind of a lie um but you shouldn't ever empty a lead battery and what the charge controller does is that it takes the electricity or the energy from the battery and then is able to also output an even line into your charge in this case it's my 12 volt 2 amp pump so that being said this whole system is only for my pump for the time being also excuse my nails i've been digging all day i don't usually like like look like this next page from the first test that we did it took 31 seconds to pump up 1.3 liters of water from that water bottle which means 23.8 seconds per liter uh which normally it's liters per second but in this case how many seconds it took per liter right and my tank at 70 liters, but we're going to pick 65 because, you know, a little buffer. That means it's going to take 1,550 seconds. And with my 2 amp pump draw and 1550 seconds to fill the tank in seconds per hour, it's going to require 0 0.86 amp hours per refill if I empty the tank. And as I showed before, my capacity of my battery is 12 amp hours, bringing it down to 60% of the maximum capacity of the battery 
so it doesn't mess up the battery and extends the life. The less that you drain your battery, the more that the life has. So I'm going to do 60% to be more conservative, and it's going to mean that I could fill my tank 6.2 times with just the battery power in a very conservative and nice way, meaning even if there's no sun for a while, it's okay. Um, and I expect to refill it maybe just once a day at most, really, once or twice a day. And it's always sunny here, so it really tells me that I have more than enough of a safety factor, or for lack of a better term, a factor of, I don't know, energy. Anyway, so that's the schematics, and I'll be going to detail on actually installing it and showing you the charge controller system and everything by the next time that I install it. So I have a couple of new attachment connections now that I'm going to connect this to the six millimeter tube, which will then be collect connected to this uh, larger adapter, which will fill into my 20 millimeter um, polyethylene tube. But to do that first, I'm going to wrap Teflon tape around it. And for those who don't know, Teflon tape just makes it less friction. So you could uh, screw these in better and also makes a proper water seal. Well, the old water trick worked again. So this is connected now to this, where I'm gonna put a ring around it soon. Connected to this, connected to this 20. That is not screwed in properly. Let me screw that in. All right, so I've connected the things again, and now test round three. All right, I'll click it, click it. I found the problem with why it wasn't working before was the priming pump because this tube was full of water and the other part wasn't so the pressure differential was just too large for the pump to overcome. Now it's working good. Okay, so I've added a couple more connections and now I've added this elbow that goes down and just installing it to the to the wall. Stable, nice. Might do another one there. We're gonna open this and let it tell me if you see water. Da. Can you suck it a little bit? I need ah, there. Show me the flow rate. Wait for it. That's not bad. So instead of going Instead of going up and down the roof every moment that I need to close the water, I'm just going to install this quick thing right here, uh, which is going to help a lot. All right, quick test to see if it works. Mm. Works. So. I've just installed the solar panel part of this system and as you might remember from the schematics what's happening is that the solar panel is positive and negative are going into this charge controller the battery is going into here and then the actual charge is going into here so now you can see how everything is working. You see, right now it's the battery is being charged. And the system's working. Now it's just, you could obviously see I don't have the right fittings for most of these things, but now it's just a time of uh, beautifying this area. But otherwise, in terms of function, it works. Now for form. All right, so now that I got everything working, it's time to make it a bit waterproof and just prettier. And I had this lying around. This is something my grandpa, uh, was putting some bread in, but I'm just going to use it instead. And this one specifically, if you know, I noticed I was going to drill some holes into it to let the wires in, but then I realized like, okay, I have to do an additional step to make it more waterproof. So this specific um, container kind of has a lip uh, where it would close on 
on top of these. So I'm just gonna make, instead of a hole through here, just a little bit of a dent so the wires could go through. And the same on the other side. All right, so there it is. A cut here. Again, sorry for my fingers. I've been digging all day. A cut there for the solar things. You could see what's going on with the solar charge controller. And when I click this here, the pump starts. So, there it is. Nicely, and now I'm not 100% sure if the water's, if the motor's waterproof, I don't think it is. And so since I'm also outdoors, I made this quick thing out of styrofoam that I found lying around, where it goes next to it, like so. And I've tilted it a little bit. And I've tilted it a bit. As you can see with a pine cone, so that when it rains, the water instantly pours off. And that's the system. It's done. <laughs>